Welcome back to another episode of Meat Sweats. Today we have a continuation of our brisket breakdown bonanza where we're bringing you everything that you need to know from start to finish on how to smoke up a, we'll be honest with ourselves, pro probably not a perfect brisket, but a pretty damn good one for sure. Like, are there going to be a couple flaws, a couple bumps in the road here and there? Yeah, probably, but we're going to set you up for success either way. Uh, so if you haven't seen the previous episode, make sure you go back and watch that one first. It's pretty important because we've already trimmed up and seasoned up the brisket. In this episode, we got the actual cook going itself, so uh, the brisket is on the pit right now. We're going to go through everything you need to know about fire management, uh, when to spritz the brisket, if you're going to spritz it at all, how to wrap it, and when we finally pull it off, we're going to tell you how to slice this thing so um, you know as you can tell with the light going off right there it's it's uh, you know it's the middle of the night right now so that's what a brisket cook is right you know, we're, we're out here it's gonna be 12 13 14 15 hours so it's a long cook we've got a lot to go let's get after it all right so once you have the brisket on the smoker uh, the biggest thing that I'm going to be focused on right now is gonna be my fire management now obviously this is gonna be something that's depending on what type of smoker that you're using uh, so you know if you're using a pellet smoker this isn't necessarily a step that you have to pay attention to um, because you know it's, it's gonna keep that temperature for you I think it's still probably gonna be a pretty good idea to just get in the habit of you know paying attention to your temperatures because I think that's gonna make you a better cook in the end um, but you know if you're on an offset or if you're on a Kamado you know something where you're physically responsible for dialing in the temperature of your smoker right now all you should be focused on is just keeping that temperature consistent keeping it where you want it to be um, and if you're working on an offset just that fire management um, so you know things that I'm looking for is how is my wood burning um, you know, how clean is my fire? Like what, what's the smoke looking like? Um, you know, how's my coal bed? Like I, I want to make sure that I have that coal bed ripping hot so that I know like if I need to, I can throw a log on there and it's going to catch super quick. It's going to get me that temperature jump that I'm looking for. And if you're on an offset, like this is a part where, you know, you can kind of pay attention to and everyone else can kind of, you know, fast forward. Um, like my fire management skill it's it's not great like i'm learning i'm learning just like everyone else is learning um but you know i i feel like i have a general i idea of how the smoker is running after doing enough cooks on it just getting those reps in there um so you know hopefully some of the shit that i've learned by screwing up a bunch of times i can pass on to you and then you can pass on to other people and you know again it doesn't matter what smoker you're using for this cook as long as you're just keeping that temperature consistent throughout and you don't have any major spikes you should be good to go a couple things actually a few things are going to be pretty important when we're talking about fire management uh the first thing is going to be airflow uh so you know when, when you're using an offset like this um you know i'm, I'm using a 250 gallon propane tank uh, with a pretty large smokestack at the end of this. So there's plenty of airflow that's going through here for me. Um, but the, the general idea is gonna be the same for every smoker that you're using. Just make sure that, listen, hot air, don't know if you know this or not, but it tends to rise. It wants to travel to cold air. So as long as you have, um, you know, if you're using a Kamado, as long as you have those vents dialed, to the right adjustment to make sure that we have enough air that is you know coming through the fire building that and then drawing through on the other end um, we should be able to burn pretty clean also if you look here uh, it's, it's kind of tough to see especially when I throw my shovel in there um, but this bottom stack of logs I'm usually going to have those going parallel with the uh, firebox um, and with the entire smoker itself. Um, I just think that that allows more air to travel through without, you know, you see these, this layer of logs on top, um, how they're going perpendicular to the firebox. I think if I had those on the bottom, it would kind of restrict airflow a little bit through everything. Um, I don't know, I'm not a scientist, so I could be wrong on that one, but whatever. Um, so airflow is huge. Second thing, um, your coal bed 
I've, I've already mentioned this before, but uh, again, another thing that's gonna be a little tough unless I actually like throw my phone into the firebox and I don't know if insurance covers that, but you wanna make sure that you always have a healthy bed of coals down here to make sure that any time that you need to throw in a log to get that temperature jumped again, um, it'll catch right away. So, you know, I don't even throw on the meat until I have, you know, I'll throw seven, eight logs on here to start and I won't throw anything on until those are all burned down and I have a nice coal bed going. Um, so with that being said, you need to make sure that you know, that's number three, uh, how your wood burns, right? Like get a feel for the wood. Um, you know, you're, you're gonna realize that, you know, there are gonna be some pieces that are tricky. Some pieces that, you know, they just end up smoldering for a while, whether they're green, whether they have knots in them, whatever. Every once in a while, like you just need to rearrange everything to get enough airflow under these splits um, and make sure that they catch fire and that they burn a full combustion uh, to make sure that we have clean smoke going through the cooking chamber, giving our meat that good flavor. Uh, instead of making it taste like an ashtray. So airflow, coal bed, and just knowing how your wood burns and how to, you know, just maneuver a few things, just move them around if you need to. Most important tool is a shovel just to get in there and move every, anything that you need to. Um, but those are the three keys that I think so far um, to fire management. I'm sure that there are more, but you know, this isn't a masterclass, this is a, a Jordy amateur hour class. So if you want more, you can learn more, but I think that those are three good things to start with. All right, so it is currently 5 a.m. Um, gonna try to be a little, little softer on the voice here so I don't wake up the neighbors, but this brisket went on the pit at 11 last night. So for all you math whizzes out there, that's about six hours into this cook. Um, so it's a pretty good time to, we're gonna take a peek under the hood, um, see how this bad boy's looking. We're gonna be checking for a few things. We wanna be looking at the color of the brisket. Um, just make sure that we're getting some good color from that smoke hitting it. Uh, we wanna look at the bark, how that's forming. We, you know, we wanna make sure that we're not hitting any, uh, or we don't have any like bald patches popping up anywhere. Um, you know, you're gonna get a few areas on the brisket where you know some fat's gonna render down um, and it's gonna kind of pull up a little bit. We don't want many of those because then it's just gonna wash away the rub and then it's gonna end up looking bald in the end. So uh, checking for color, checking for bark, uh, and then just checking for any dry spots. Um, you know, sometimes if, if you run the pit a little too hot, um, you'll see like the flat might curl up on you a little bit. So we just wanna check for all that. And anywhere that looks a little dry, we're gonna spray it down with some ACV, a little apple cider vinegar. All right, so it is coming up on 8 a.m. here, which means that this brisket has been rolling on smoke for about nine hours at this point. So it's just around that time that we're gonna start to check it, see if we are ready to pull it off and wrap. Uh, so before we do that, we're gonna check a few things. One, we're gonna probe it for temp, just to get a general idea of where we're at in the cook. Uh, we're gonna check, again, color and bark. That's, you know, two of the most important things here. Um, you know, it's not gonna be taking on any more smoke after we wrap it, so we just wanna make sure that that's all good. And last thing, we're just gonna look to see if any of uh, that fat is starting to pull apart a little bit, just to show us that we have some good rendering going on. Uh, at this point in the cook, we'll, we'll probably get some of that. I mean, the flat's still probably gonna be pretty tight, uh, but we should get a little bit of movement in the point. So, you know, once it checks all those boxes, we will pull it off the pit. We'll tear up a couple sheets of butcher paper, wrap this up, and then we'll finish her off from there. All right, so when it comes to wrapping, uh, you can use foil if you know that's all you have or if that's what you like. Personally, I prefer butcher paper, uh, but foil paper doesn't really matter. Uh, the most important thing that you want to remember and you want to keep in mind, you got to keep it tight, boys and girls, right? Like, 
like you want to be rolling this up like you are a line worker at chipotle on a burrito uh, so we've got two sheets of butcher paper here we've got the point it's going to be lined up to you know my left if i was going here long ways first fold we are going to do is we're just going to come straight over top of the brisket that way so we come all the way across and then that way we can use the brisket itself to kind of pull back on the paper and keep that nice and tight uh, from there we're just gonna tuck the edges underneath just to give it a nice little protective coat down there then we are going to come over top and the sides flatten that out next up we are going to bring the other side over we're going to flatten that out as well all right and we put it fat side up to start so we're going to give it one turn here right now we have the bottom end of the brisket is going to be facing up right now which is totally fine just make sure everything stays nice and tight because then we are going to flip it once more now we have that fat side up again from here we are just going to fold up the last remaining bit of that paper and we will then tuck it right underneath again giving it as much protection underneath as we can but in the end here is a nice wrapped up brisket so over top pull it tight tuck the sides side one over side two over roll keep it tight roll keep it tight fold under bada bing bada boom we are ready to throw this back on and now we're just gonna finish it off. So we can bump that temperature up a little bit if we need to. We can go to the 285, we can take it to 300 if we want to. Um, at this point, you know, the smoke that gets on it isn't quite as important because it's covered in paper, um, but we're just gonna try to get this to temp. We're gonna try to get it to tenderness. And, you know, we still have a few more hours here before we're ready to pull it and have it rest. All right, so it's a little after 11 now. The brisket's been on the smoker for a total of 12 hours. It's been wrapped for the past three. Uh, and over those three hours, we've just been keeping the fire going, trying to keep those temps as consistent as we can. Uh, you know, I might've snuck a quick little nap in there while the brisket was wrapped. So the temp might've dropped down a little bit on me, but we ramped it right back up. Um, this thing is definitely close to being done, uh, but you know, we just wanna be super patient here and make sure that it's definitely ready before we actually pull it. So we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna get in there with a thermometer and we're just gonna probe for tenderness. Um, you know, we're, we're not too concerned with an actual temperature. We're not going for like an exact number here. It should probably end up being around like 202, 203, whatever. Um, but we just wanna, you know, stick that thermometer in there, feel for tenderness. And then also we'll uh, get in there with our hands and, you know, get on the, you know, the underside of the brisket, try to get like towards the middle and just kind of feel up and see how the meat falls over your fingers um, just to get the tenderness there. So, you know, th there's, there have been so many briskets that I have fucked up that, you know, I definitely pulled them off like 15 minutes too early. Um, you know, was that close to getting an awesome product, but you know, I got a little impatient, took it off just, you know, a few minutes early before it was actually ready. And then you end up with tough, you know, uh, brisket that just ends up being super dry. So patience is a virtue here. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this thing has 15, 30 more minutes to go though. So time to finish strong. So it is 12.15, uh, total cook time on this brisket, 13 hours, 15 minutes. 
Um, it was wrapped for, I guess, what's that, the last little over four hours. Um, waited until a probe tender and until, you know, I could kind of lift up the middle of that brisket and kind of start to fall to either side of my fingers. I uh, also wanted to make sure that there was no tightness left in the flat. Um, so, yeah, I mean, pretty, uh, I feel pretty good about this cook. Um, we'll, I mean, we won't know how it actually went until we slice into it, but I think we did everything right that we needed to do. So set ourselves up for success. Now it's going to just be hanging out in the cooler for a few hours. Going to let all those uh, juices, all the moisture reabsorb back into that brisket before we cut into it. Um, so yeah, I mean, it should be ready for dinner and then we'll see how we did from there. All right, so at this point, the brisket had been resting in the cooler for a few hours. We wanted to make sure that all the moisture that was getting pushed out during the cook gets a chance to get back into the meat. Uh, you know, if you're cooking at home and you know, you're trying to feed people, let's say you're eating dinner sometime around 6.30, you gotta make sure like when you're scheduling this cook, like have that brisket off at a minimum, maybe like 4.30, like always give it at least two hours to rest to everything kind of settle down, get that moisture back in there. Like if you put a brisket on the pit at 6.30 in the morning thinking it's gonna take you 12 hours, and then you're gonna pull it off at 6.30 and serve people right there. Like one, it's probably gonna take a little bit longer than you expected because that's just the way the brisket is. Two, you're not gonna give it enough time to rest and you know you just spent all that time cooking this damn thing. You might as well have it be as best as it possibly can be. Um, speaking of getting it best that it possibly can be, listen, everything that we've done so far to this brisket you know it's going to be good, okay? The trim, the season, getting good, clean smoke on there, uh, cooking it to the point that we get that tenderness. Everything about what we've done is gonna be good. But the final piece of that puzzle is going to be slicing. That's how we're going to get it to be, again, not perfect. We're, we're not cooking perfect briskets here. Um, you know, at least, at least not me. Uh, but pretty damn incredible. Um, so first off, if you can just see, I mean, look at look at the movement on this brisket. I mean, this thing just wants to give out. Uh, let's move this butcher paper. Wife's gonna kill me doing this on the dinner table, but whatever, worth it. Now when we're slicing this thing, remember way back in the first video when we were first talking about giving brisket some context, just going over you know what the actual cut of meat is. We mentioned that there are two separate muscles going on with this cut of meat. And that is important when it comes to slicing because those grains are gonna be going opposite ways from each other. So on the flat, we've got grains coming, you know, kind of like towards me this way. So we're gonna be cutting against the grain here on the flat going this way, going, you know, a little thin, that, that nice like number two pencil thickness. That's pretty standard in the Q game. Um, but then we're eventually gonna hit a point where the flat and the point are both in the same slice. And at that point, we are going to then turn the brisket because the grains are gonna be going the way that we've been slicing. And then we have to cut across the grains that way. Um, so starting off on the flat here. Uh, now, I'll be honest, my, uh, my knife skills aren't necessarily great. Like I know if I was on the line on, at like an actual barbecue restaurant, they like murder me for having my fingers like out there. Like they think I'm gonna cut my finger off and then bleed all over their briskets. Um, but you know, whatever. Um, so let's just get these slices from the flat going. jinx anything here but I'm feeling pretty good about this um, I mean we've got great tenderness here uh, the fat has rendered real nice just wait until we get to this money muscle because I think that's gonna be a great looking shot here um, barks holding up pretty well with you know the, the knife cutting through 
Um, oh my god, we're getting some nice, nice oozes out of these slices. Alright, we're, we're just about ready to turn this. slice out of the flat that we're going to get. We are going to then turn and cut against the grain coming the opposite direction. Get rid of that chunk right there. So when you're cutting the point uh, you can go a little thicker on your slices just because they're going to be, you know, so juicy, so tender from all that fat that's rendered down uh, that, you know, a little bit thicker on the slice is going to hold up better than a thin one would. Um, I mean, the tenderness here is like insane. I don't know. I, I think we crushed this one. We'll, we'll get a we'll get a better shot once this whole thing is fully cut. But between bark, tenderness, rendered fat, I am uh, pretty pretty happy with this cook. And down here, we'll just kind of cube these last ones up into uh, you know little. I guess mini bite end or burn ends. Um, eventually, you'll you'll hit a a point in the point where like you're you're not going to get another slice out of it. So you know if you're cooking for friends and family, you get to that last bit. Just you know cut a little. I know it's tough to see. Camera's a little far away, but you're going to get to a certain point on the point where. You know if you try to get one more slice out of it, it's just gonna kind of crumble apart. So you just cube up these little bite-sized pieces. You got a buddy who's been hanging out with you while you've been doing the majority of the cook. Hand him this, he takes a bite. It's insane. Oh my God. Yo, we drilled this one. We killed this cook. We gotta go check it out, come on. Oh my lord are you kidding me with this right now look at that bark look at all that rendered fat look at that juiciness that tenderness let me let me get in here let me grab a little slice of this lean real quick oh it's falling apart just trying to pick it up are you kidding me holding together by a thread look at all that rendered fat in the middle there yeah, crushed it. Let's go. And there you have it. That is the end of class. Everything that you need to know from start to finish on how to crush your next brisket cook. Listen, all it takes is just a little bit of extra work, paying attention to detail, sacrificing a little bit of quantity for quality. I know it's gonna hurt like a bitch when you're doing that trim because it feels like you're wasting so much meat, but believe me, when you get those slices at the end of the day that have the perfect amount of rendered fat that provide nothing but flavor and tenderness, it's worth it every single time. So get out there and get smoking.